Howdy, howdy, legends. Zephyr, professional Apex Legends caster and analyst, here for another Apex Legends video. Today, we're talking about settings. Which settings should you be using in Apex Legends? But don't just take it from me. Today, we're looking at which settings the pros use to get ahead of the game. Are they doing something that you're missing or running a sensitivity you've never even considered? You'll have to stick around and find out. But first, our question of the day. Which legend was first added in Season 4? Let us know in the comments and see if you can get it right. No cheating. Sensitivity. Sensitivity is one of these settings that really separates a lot of pro players, and while we will take you through several of the common settings that a lot of pros use to give them an advantage, there is no meta sensitivity to use. Some players prefer a higher sensitivity, which will allow them to move a bit easier. If you want to do some crazy tap strafe plays on low sense, you literally have to yeet your arm across your mouse pad. But a whole bunch of pros do use a lower sense. This allows them a lot more control with their aim and tracking, especially at a mid-range. The lower the sense, the more you can deliberately make very small adjustments. Further variation comes as a result of what sort of mouse pad people use, the weight of their mouse, and even if they wear a sleeve or not. I always like to think of sensitivity like choosing what shoes to wear in a sport. There are plenty of good options, and there are pros and cons for each type of sense. You can't just copy a sense from someone. You need to find what works for you. Luckily, we have a guide on how to do that. But let's run through some of the top players and see what sensitivities they use, just to give you a rough idea of what we're working with here. DPI is a mouse value, and then the number that comes after is the multiplier. So, 400 DPI 2.0 would be the same as 800 DPI 1.0. Sweet Dreams, player for NRG, currently plays at 100 DPI 1.4. Dropped, who plays for Space Station Gaming, uses 400 DPI and 2.0. Then, totally on the other end of the spectrum, is Optic Skittlecakes, who plays on 1600 DPI and 2.7. This is, by far, the highest sense of any pro player, and is actually incredibly unusual, but hey, it works for him. Contrast this with Monsoon of Complexity, who plays 800 DPI at 0.8, one of the lowest senses in the game. Now, that was a lot of numbers. What does it show us? Something around 800 DPI, 1.3 to 1.6, is about average, and that could be a solid starting point, and taking it from there to see a sense that maybe potentially suits you. And that's just mouse and keyboard, though. When we head to controller, we have a whole new world of numbers. 4 to 4, 3 to 4, you name it. There's a whole bunch of different senses at play among controller players as well. Of course, the same principles apply. However, a lot of pro players who use controller do use a specific setting. They deploy ALCs, and we talk about what they are in more detail in our controller settings guide. While players do use a lot of different settings in their ALCs, and you need to find what works for you, the reason why ALCs are so commonly used is because they give a lot of control over exactly how your controller will behave and react. We do recommend setting up ALCs and taking the time to find what exact settings work for you. It takes time, but it's worth it. Looking for a leg up in Apex? Pro Guide says everything you need to supercharge your gameplay to the next level. From detailed in-game knowledge and guides to specialist coaches, whatever your gameplay needs, we've got you covered. Why not sit down with an Apex Predator and get direct feedback on your gameplay? Perhaps ask them for their tips and tricks on how to reach the next ranked in Apex. Check out the link in the description and let's go! Keybinds like mouse sensitivity, plenty of players use a range of keybinds from personal preferences. It might be because of a different game they played, or perhaps because of the sort of mouse or keyboard they use. Controller players sometimes have paddles they can use for extra binds, but others don't. However, there are some pretty meta keybinds, particularly for the mouse. Number one is toggle versus hold crouch and ADS. Almost every major pro player uses hold ADS and hold crouch for their settings. 
Hold crouch makes it much easier to crouch spam, which is a really strong technique for making yourself harder to hit in those tense 1v1 situations. Plus, it also allows you to turbo teabag other players' boxes, a super key skill. Hold ADS allows you to switch between ADS and non-ADS views super easily, and it feels much more intuitive. This is great with shotguns like the Peacekeeper, but also especially with the new laser sights. ADSing briefly and then switching to hip fire is a great way to take close range engagements. Plus, a lot of pro players will sometimes very briefly ADS mid hip fire spray to reset the bloom on their weapon, helping keep that hip fire super accurate. Then, another very common keybind among pro players involves the scroll wheel on your mouse. The default keybind is to have scroll wheel up and down change to your weapon. It, it makes sense, it's very intuitive to do so. However, by rebranding up and down on your wheel to forward movement and jump, you open up some pretty crazy movement techniques. Scroll wheel on jump allows you to both bunny hop and it also allows you to wall bounce, two of the most staple movement techniques in the game and some of the easiest and most accessible ways to add a bit of flair to your gameplay. Then adding another scroll wheel to forward movement unlocks the two best movement techniques in the game. But don't forget, bind it as an alternate keybind. Don't unbind W. This alternate bind allows you to super glide and tap strafe. And both of these are very advanced movement techniques, and thankfully, we have a handy guide to learn them. Why are these so powerful? Mostly because of one main reason, unpredictability. If you are doing some crazy movement, zooming all over the place, turning round corners at 180 degree angles, and just generally being unpredictable and fast, this makes you much harder to hit. Especially as a pro player, if you could save yourself 10 HP from being just that little bit harder to hit, it can make all the difference in a fight or on a rotation, which could change your tournament totally. At the lower level, this impact is honestly a lot bigger. You expect pro players to do everything in their power to win, so super gliding and tap strafing are almost commonplace. Yet, yeah, in the lower ranks, you might actually be blowing Gold Gary's mind with your wall bounce tap strafe movement combo. These techniques are absolutely worth learning and can make a noticeable difference in game. Video settings. Finally, video settings. While of course some specific settings do depend on what hardware players are running, there is a key theme. Pro players absolutely want to maximize their FPS in game to make sure they achieve the stable frame rate that matches whatever refresh rate their monitor has. Now, let's be clear. If playing Apex is your primary job, it makes sense that you'll have top of the range PCs and monitors, but you don't need these to be successful and don't feel like you have to spend your life savings on your setup to push through the top Apex ranks. There are a fair group of pro players that haven't broken into those top earning brackets yet, and they play on a budget, so let's use those as an example. First, we are setting our graphics budget to high, depending on what GPU we have. Then we are turning settings down as much as we need to, to achieve a solid FPS at our monitor's refresh rate. In particular, we are turning off volumetric lighting. Even players with super PCs turn this setting off. But why? Volumetric lighting has a pretty noticeable impact on GPU load and can actually harm you in the game. Ever looked up and been blinded by the sun in game? Especially with so many Valkyrie ultimates in the game, not being able to see the sky clearly can actually be a hindrance at the cost of lowering your FPS as well. Spot shadows is also a setting very commonly turned off. It really does help your FPS, and shadows only make things harder to see. Most pro players play with V-Sync disabled as well, as this can cause some slight input lag, but they might have G-Sync in their monitors, which can reduce tearing, so apply this advice with caution. Some pros do use stretched resolutions, but the vast majority will keep it to a simple 1080p 16 to 9 aspect ratio. Finally, almost every pro will use 110 FOV. The extra vision it gives you and the way that this allows you to see much more of the landscape around you is invaluable. That's all for our pro player settings rundown. 
do check out our other videos for full guides on more settings and how to work out what is best for you. Until next time, legends.